Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, 7 T. It's your girl, Lady J, back bringing you my thoughts, comments, and commentary on your favorite ladies in the female rap game. So before I get into it, you already know what I got to say. Hit that thumbs up, like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that. And then follow me on my Twitter, y'all. Please follow me on my Twitter. That's where you can get my real live thoughts on shit when it happens. I'm active on Twitter on a daily. I do YouTube when I can at this point, baby, because if you don't know, if you ain't been here, a bitch is nine months pregnant, okay? So when this baby drop, baby, you might not see me on YouTube for a couple of weeks, child. I ain't going to lie to you. So you will see me on Twitter, though. I, um, I'm always on there giving my thoughts, commentary, and opinions. I'm always engaging with y'all. So hit me up on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, all of that, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the Hey, baby. Do you hear me? All right, y'all. So the first topic I want to get into is the queen of this whole rap shit, Okay. So congratulations to Onika Tanya because she has sold out her 18th and 19th um, tour. You know, she's on tour. So she has sold out like her 18th and 19th show. I think she was just recently in Brooklyn. Packed that bitch out. But, you know, she's been packing all them hoes out. But, of course, you know, she won't get certain coverage over how she's, you know, selling out her tours because people want to, you know, have this certain. They want, they want you know what I've seen? I've seen them post something about Kenneth Petty. I've seen the blogs post something about her man, uh, her husband, Kenny, having to update his um, picture on the uh, sex registry or sex offender registry. But they refuse to post anything positive about her sold out shows. And she is the highest selling female rapper to have the best, you know, um, world tour, you know, by the way, the only one to sell out shows like this. But they won't post that because that just, you know, just goes to show that she's still on these bitches necks and that she's still at the top of her game. Um but, you know, they will try their best to, you know, paint this smear campaign and, and to make her look bad. And I just think that's fucking pathetic because watch when these other hosts start going on tour. They're going to try to post as many positive things as they can, even though they ain't going to sell and pack that bitch out like Onika. OK, so you let me know what you think about that. Now, Nikki has also teased a remix to fuck the club up, which we knew been coming, but we just didn't really know who was on it. Well, now we know at least one person who might be on it. So she basically teased that Sexy Red would be on the remix. So Nikki had tweeted to Sexy, you got your verse for fuck the club up, finna drop the remix at Sexy Red. Left Pound Town to go to fuck the club, to go fuck the club up, a remix for remix. And Sexy responded and was, was like, um, song and video. And Nikki said, Miss Lady, bring the kids in a stroller. That's all I got to offer right now. A play date. Let somebody film us, bitch. Sexy no dang well. We on tour in Gag City. See me that verse right away, please, ma'am. It's a superstar or two on there as well. Get it, Sexy. So let me know how you would feel about a remix with a Fuck the Club Up with Sexy Red. I think Sexy Red, you know, is good on songs like that. You know, she got the whole get it sexy shit. She make club bangers. I wouldn't be mad if Sexy Red is on it. And plus, you know, Nikki gave her a feature or a remix. So, you know, Sexy can return a favor, okay? Um, so I don't think she would sound bad on it. Now, Nikki also basically said that there was... Um, you know, she said that there was a superstar or two on there as well. And a lot of people feel like possibly it could be Drake because originally Fuck the Club Up was supposed to be on Drake's album. But, you know, Nikki took it for herself. So um, people think it's Drake. Let me know how you feel. I mean, if it's Drake, if he don't promote this shit and I feel like, you know, because he's been having some weird relationship going on with Sexy Red. I don't know, but they've been in close proximity lately. So it wouldn't surprise me if it is Drake when you add in the fact that, you know, Fuck the Club Up was supposed to be on Drake's um, For All the Dogs, I think. So, you know, um, people feel like it's Drake. My thing about it is if it's Drake, I'm going to need him to promote because he ain't promoted shit from Nicki's album, but he's been promoting the hell out of Sexy Red, which is just kind of off to me. I don't know if they fucking, I don't know if that's her secret baby daddy. I don't know if he just making money off of her. I don't know, but it's a little bit weird. So, you know, hopefully if it is Drake, he'll promote it. Um, but she said a superstar or two. So, mm, and I think it's a male because she did say, um, a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago that, um, there was a male on the song. So, you know, possibly is Drake or it could be somebody else. You know, that'd be iconic if it was like a Cole or, but she already got a collaboration with Cole. Um, I doubt a Kendrick Lamar or anything like that. I mean, possibly, but I doubt that. I don't know. Y'all let me know who y'all think. Cause I can't really think about it right now. Okay. Now moving on, 
Super Bass has become Nicki's highest certified single. It is 12 times platinum, highest for any female rapper. And then Starships is also nine times platinum now. Super Freaky Girl is two times platinum. For every bit of sleeves is platinum. And Pink Friday to the album is platinum, making all her albums platinum or higher. So congratulations to Nicki Minaj, the most certified, highest selling female rapper still 15 years later in the game. You know, they don't want to put that out there, but, you know, facts are facts, bitch, okay? Eat that. So, y'all let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about that down below. And real quick before I get off Nikki, because this recently just came in, um, Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday 2 World Tour um, officially becomes the biggest tour by a female rapper in history, grossing over $34 million so far with just 17 shows. And I saw a lot of people trying to act dense in the motherfucking comments talking about some, well, ain't she the only female um, rapper to go on tour? The fact that you even say that she's the only female rapper to go on tour just shows you that she's the only female rapper that can go on a motherfucking tour, bitch. And I think, and I wanna keep this up because Megan's about to go on tour. And people think Megan is really selling out them tickets, but she's only selling it out for a certain number of capacity, okay? So at the end of the day, Megan is not going to surpass these numbers, and I can guarantee you that. No matter what she or her team tries to do, she will not be passing those numbers because ain't nobody paying money like that to go see Megan. Not she will not gross over thirty-four million. Oh, she will. First of all, even if she did touch thirty-four million, Nikki is has only done seventeen shows so far. She still has plenty more. What is this? Not even half her tour. So. She has already, and she surpassed Doja's numbers, because Doja Cat was another female rapper that went on tour. But she's sur been surpassed that, but she is officially the biggest tour by female rapper in history, grossing over 30 million, 34 million thus far, thus far. So it's no selling how much she will end with, baby. So at the end of the day, when Megan get ready to go outside and go on tour, they can say whatever about her tour numbers all they want to because, you know, they're going to try to hype her up and try to make her look good, try to claim her ticket to selling. I bet you they will not come tell you how much she's grossed um, toward the end of her tour or at any point because as long as it's not higher than Nikki's grossing tour, they're not going to report that for Megan. They might report, oh, she sold this out and yada, yada, blase, blase, but they're not going to report her grow how much she grossed on that tour because it won't surpass Nikki. I guarantee you she can't do that. She has not even have built that level of a fan base yet. So, and you just got to swallow up real pill with that. But congratulations to Nicki Minaj. No other female rapper has done this. And I feel like no other female rapper will do this for quite some time. Okay, so shout out to the motherfucking queen. Congratulations. Now, the next topic I want to get into is Young Miami. So as y'all know, this whole Diddy scandal shenanigans shit has been going on, you know, the feds is on his ass, you know, for all this alleged um, human trafficking and sexual allegations against him, which young, Mi young, oh, child, I can't talk. young Miami has not even, you know, given any comment or anything about it as it pertains to Diddy. People still believe that she's fucking with Diddy. So she did respond, though, to a tweet because um, young Miami had tweeted that y'all be going for anything. OK. And someone responded and said, you, for that 250K a month. And Miami responded and said, something the internet made up and y'all ran with it. Niggas don't even pay that for child support. Why the fuck would a nigga ever pay me 250K for? For what? Well, baby, I don't know if you're doing so much of that um, pink girl, a.k.a. white girl, okay, allegedly, according to them court documents. Um, I don't know if you done forgot, but you literally said that Diddy gives you an allowance, Okay that he takes you on $100,000 shopping sprees and shit. So if, if $100,000 ain't shit and allowances ain't shit, what the fuck is 250K a month to Diddy? You know what I'm saying? You the one said that the nigga pays you often like a, an allowance. So what are you talking about? The internet made it up and ran with it. And on top of that, it's in court documents. So people haven't made it up. It's literally something in legal documents, baby. Something that was stated, okay? But we're going to say allegedly, okay? Even though I'm not going to lie to you, I honestly believe he was paying you something every month, okay? Because that's just what um, escorts and um, sex workers do, okay? And, you know, see, I definitely believe that young Miami was over there doing something strange for a piece of change, and you call yourself a whore. She literally called herself a whore, literally, out her own mouth. She said, I'm a whore. That's what she said. 
So, I mean, baby, the internet didn't make shit up, baby. You said what you said. Um, so that's how I feel about it. Honestly, and then I think um, Young Miami has a song that she wants people to pre-save. Girl, people ain't worried about this goddamn song. I don't even know the name of the song, but she's been around promoting it. I don't know what made Young Miami get back into the music. She ain't really been caring about it before. Um, but I guess this is her so-called Yams era. Um, what's the song? She don't even got it in her bio. But she's been asking people to... Um, uh, what is it? Oh, it's called CFWM, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. She's been having people to pre-save it. I, I don't even know if this shit is out or not. I, I don't think so because I ain't nobody been talking about it. But I don't know. And then she's supposed to be doing these club runs like JT. She see JT doing her thing. But the thing about it is JT makes music that the people want to hear and that the people know the lyrics to and going to sing back to a rap with her with in the club. Baby, don't none of your songs that you release, Carisha Stick. Nobody gives a fuck about your music career. At this point, you're just an influencer. You you What's the point of you releasing music that nobody cares to hear and that nobody knows? Like, you're not making songs um, that stick like JT. You're not rapping. First of all, you're not really a rapper. And this is something that you don't want to do for real. This is just something that you got back to now because your shit with Diddy ain't going how you really wanted it to. But that's just my most humble opinion, baby. You can let me know what you think down below. All right, so the next topic I want to get into is Cardi B. So apparently um, Cardi B has unfollowed Sexy Red after Nikki T's Sexy Red being on the remix. And Cardi most definitely was following Sexy Red. And Sexy Red, last time I checked, was still following Cardi. But up until recently, Cardi B has completely unfollowed Sexy Red. Um, and y'all... Y'all really want Nikki to be who Cardi really uh, who Cardi really is because why the fuck what was your reason and point and un unfollowing Sexy Red for especially after you just mentioned her in your motherfucking Twitter arguments with uh, Ramonte like make it make sense babe so let me know what y'all feeling and what you thinking about that but I just found that to be very interesting like noted um, but a lot of people including myself feel like Cardi B has been seeking attention because like. As you know, a lot of her records that she she's released like four five records in a month, and all of them haven't really done much of anything. They flip flopped off the motherfucking charts, or you know they just haven't been performing well, or, or they're not stable. Um, for example, the Enough record that she put out two weeks ago, it debuted at number nine, and then the next week plummeted down to number forty two, and it's predicted to go even further this upcoming week. And I believe Enough or not Enough, the like what freestyle? I think that's already off the motherfucking charts. And if it's not, it'll definitely be off by next week. The record with Shakira debuted at number 74. Nobody was checking for that. And then the record with Flo Millie didn't do shit. You know what I'm saying? With SZA and her and Flo Millie. So a lot of people just not really checking for Cardi B's music like that. And Cardi B really don't know what to do. And she really don't know what people want to hear. And a lot of the shit that she really put out honestly sounds old. So I think a lot of this stuff that she's been doing lately um, is just for her to seek attention, okay? Because she made up this story against LAPD, making her strip naked and her going to sue. And turns out it was never really fucking true. Like it was just some shit she was saying. Her fans tried to make it seem like, oh, she was just joking. Bitch, it didn't sound like she was motherfucking joking. Where was the joke? The bitch don't know, like, it, it was just, it was just a mess, right? So like I said, Enough has fallen almost 40 spots to number 46 on Billboard High 100 this past week, and it's only in its second week. The song with Shakira debuted at number 74. I don't feel like it's going to rise any higher than that. Um, and on top of that, Cardi B has admitted that she feels like she has lost herself in this um, industry. So take a listen. I feel like I have lost myself and I'm regaining myself, but I, but I feel like I haven't lost myself in a way that other people have. Like mm -hmm. This is why I, some artists, they start developing like mental issues and 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 start doing drugs and everything and some people just be like oh but i would never do drugs and it's like i don't blame these motherfuckers. this is a lot yeah that's <laughs> so, what people say oh you signed up for it. and it's like no you don't sign up for that. i didn't sign and up for this thing the, the skin is supposed to be thicker and, and and you know what i don't be liking like when somebody get like killed in a very like crazy way and then people were like, oh, well, they shouldn't have been doing that. Like, oh, well, well, they shouldn't. And it's like, what yeah. do you mean, oh, well? Like, they're yeah, dead. Man. Like, like y'all have lost every type of compassion. Mm -hmm. Like, people have lost every type of compassion. Like, it's just like, damn, is this really the world that we have lived in? And I don't yeah. know, like, this generation to me is a little bit... <laughs> I feel like I have lost myself and I'm regaining myself. But I, but I feel like I haven't lost myself in a way that other people have. Like, mm -hmm. this is... So let me know what you think and how you feeling about that. But honestly, it's not really a shocker because you came in here, you know, you know, people try to 
you know, big you up and, and put you on this pedestal that you were never really qualified to be on. And it, it you kind of lost your sense of self because now, you know, you're being compared to all these girls who you really not really can, like, being compared to Nicki Minaj, you can't compete with Nicki. But now you're being compared to all these other girls and now you kind of feel lost, like you really don't know what people want. Um, and it's honestly because she's flopping, in my most humble opinion. Um, people aren't really they don't have the same temperature when it comes to Cardi B anymore. You know, we got Sexy Red, we got all these other girls. Nobody's really checking for Cardi B like that. And if they were, you know, her music would be doing much better because Sexy Red's music is doing much better than hers, okay? And that's just what it is. So um, Cardi B got into it with Raymonte and kept it going the next day, even after all this shit was over. But, you know, she only did that to trend because, like I said, songs been flopping already. So she got into it with Raymonte basically over you know, being, um, how she can get away with more because basically she, I'm not going to read that whole exchange. It's too much. You can go back on Twitter and, and get into it. But basically, um, Ramonte was just saying how, you know, she gets away with more, um, because of, you know, her light skinnedness and her not really being a black woman, but you know, she can still get away with the ghetto shit and still get those deals, those brand deals and shit. And he exposed how she kind of brings up Ice Spice and other women because, Cardi reached out to him before and said, you know, why are you calling me a Mexican? We don't call I Spice a Mexican and she's Dominican like me. And so, you know, Ramonte kind of put that on blast, put that ass on blast, how she be bringing up other women because, you know, Cardi B feel like, or Ramonte feel like Cardi B don't like him because he likes Nicki Minaj and he's a barb and whatnot. So he exposed that, you know, she brings up I Spice. And when that was brought up, I Spice got involved when her name is mentioned. OK, but before that, I just want to say this, give my little two cents on that whole Cardi B. Raymonte shit. Um, nationality, race and ethnicity has got my community in a motherfucking chokehold. I want y'all to stop. Dominican is a place. Being Dominican means you're just simply from the Dominican Republic. That does not put an emphasis on you being black mixed or biracial or white or whatever the fuck you can literally be a white dominican you can be a black dominican you can be a biracial dominican or a multi a multiracial dominican which is what i believe cardi is you know she claims that her mother's mom was a black woman um which i seen those pictures she don't look black at all uh, and let's be clear black is a race okay and if you have to go back two generations to mention somebody is black, baby, that doesn't apply to you. You're not black, okay? You're multiracial at best because your daddy is definitely not black at all. And your mama is definitely questionable, okay? If anything, she looks biracial. Your daddy look white. You're multiracial Dominican, okay? And that's just what it is. I Spice actually has a black parent. You can be from Trinidad and be Asian, Indian, black, white. Like, y'all don't understand. Like, literally, just like you can be born in America, just because I say I'm American, it don't mean I'm... Like, you can be black American, you can be white American, you can be Hispanic American, you can be Asian American. Like, y'all got to stop. Just because you're from a country and you want to identify as that, that that don't, that don't you know, put a specificity on your race. Because you can be from anywhere and be any race, okay? So Cardi B, no, she is not black. And yes, she does get privileges that a lot of black women would not be afforded because they are black or because of the way they act, okay? Sexy Red don't get the same brand deals as a Cardi B. But anyways... When I Spice got involved, um, when her name was mentioned, she had quoted Cardi and was like, no, no offense, Barty. It's because I have a Dominican parent and a black one, which was shady. It was shady. And Cardi responded and said, I think there might be some confusion on what was said. I asked why he feels comfortable calling me a Mexican. I have no Mexican parents. My mom is Trini. She came out of a whole black woman. My father is Dominican. I'm Dominican just like you. I also used other Dominicans as an example because, as you should know, a lot of times we get clustered into one because of the language. Also, can you send me the pic you took, you took of me with your camera from Vanity Fair? Thank you. Moi. Now, that last sentence is what got me because she low-key pulled I Spice car. And I Spice slow ass responded by posting the pic of them at Vanity Fair and said, de la moi, or whatever that means, a moi. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that was Cardi B when she said, also, can you send me that pic you took of me with your camera from Vanity Fair? That kind of was a, 
well, since you want to be funny, bitch, and, and insert yourself, how about you show the people that you really fucking with me since you never posted those pictures of me, but you could post those pics with Sweetie and other hoes. Show these people that you really fuck with me behind. This is kind of similar to her, you know, get, going, getting mad and going on Twitter and saying these bitches really be in her DMs and she can make them embarrassed. This is kind of similar to that. She's saying, bitch, since you want to insert yourself and try to embarrass me, then why don't you show the people that you really fuck with me because you was just uh, fucking with me a couple of weeks ago at Vanity Fair. That's what this was. And she pulled Ice Spice's card and Ice Spice kind of looked crazy. Like Cardi low-key sunned you, bitch. She low-key sunned you. She wanted the people to see that you really, you know, was fucking with her just a couple of weeks ago. And now you got the barbs looking at you kind of crazy because they was, they was a big part of Ice Spice's support team. And now a lot of them, a lot of them is looking at her kind of crazy. Okay. And now you got blogs like The Neighborhood Talk you know, posting the picture, uh, excuse me, posting a picture with no context, basically saying, oh, look at the new pics from Better New Fair that Ice Spice posted with Cardi B. They didn't post none of the context that happened and how that picture came to be posted um, and, you know, how Ice Spice had originally responded to Cardi B. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Cardi played Ice Spice and Ice Spice, you played right into her hand. And that's unfortunate because usually Ice Spice move a little bit smarter than that. But, you know, it is what it is. Y'all let me know what you feeling and how you thinking about it. Now, speaking of Ice Spice, though, she did try to do a little bit damage control the next day because, like I said, she got kind of sunned by Cardi B. Cardi B basically, you know, because Cardi B felt some type of way that Ice Spice tried to make her look kind of crazy, talking about she got a black parent, meanwhile Cardi don't. And so, you know, like I said, Cardi talking about some bitch, showed them that you really fuck with me behind the scenes. Um, so Ice Spice tried to do a little bit of damage because she did piss a lot of the barbs off. And she ended up liking a photo or a gif of her and Nikki in the Princess Diana video. Um, here's my two cents. I think, I mean, Ice Spice has never really chosen a side. However, she hasn't spoken on Cardi B since the time she first came out and went to Cardi's party. And Cardi was supposed to allegedly be on a Munch remix that never happened. And Ice Spice kind of aligned herself with Nicki. She got those collaborations. She kept mentioning Nicki in the interviews. She follows a lot of the barbs. Like, she really doesn't interact with Cardi B as much. She might like a photo here and there. But for the most part, she ha has aligned herself with Nicki this whole time. Um, you know what I'm saying? So she's never really just chosen a side, but she has more so aligned herself with Nikki and her fans. And so by posting this pic, um, and her, and, you know, Cardi telling us to post this pic, she kind of backed her in a corner and exposed her for, you know, really fucking with her behind the scenes because keep it real, I Spice was never going to post that photo of her and Cardi. If she was going to post it, she would have posted it already, but she did post a pic with her, sweetie. So Ice Spice was never going to post that pic with Cardi because she knew how optically it would look. She was just going to keep that one to herself. But, you know, Cardi B played, you know, she played right into Cardi B's hand. So honestly, she's trying to do damage control. Um, do I think Ice Spice, you know, loves and admires, respects Nikki? Yes. But I also think she kind of wants to show love to Cardi, but she don't want to do it publicly she wants to do that behind the scenes and cardi b is not really fucking with that you know what i'm saying even though i feel like she's more so inspired by nikki i do feel like you know she doesn't really want to choose any sides for real but now you've been exposed and it's like you're trying to kind of do damage control a little bit but anyways i spice wins best new hip-hop artist at the i Heart radio awards congratulations to her but what's really tea was i spice team blocking her and lotto from interacting with each other on that red carpet, baby, do you hear me? And Lotto is now being called out for being a hypocrite because she the one who said, book me with them hoes is going to be big drama. And talking about, I just want a one-on-one, don't know why she's so nervous, okay? But in the end, um, ain't shit happened. And y'all talking about some, oh, this was an event. What did y'all want to happen? That would be so ghetto. Y'all weren't saying that shit when Cardi tried to attack Nikki at that high class event, okay? So y'all can keep the bullshit, you know? Y'all pick and choose what's okay when it's somebody that you fuck with or, or that you like or is on the opposite side of someone that you don't like. So y'all can say about that bullshit. It was cute when Cardi did it, but now all of a sudden it's classy when Lotto don't do it. And that's just what I don't fuck with, okay? Lotto the one who want to fake be ghetto and be from Atlanta. Talking about book me with them hoes is going to be big drama. Y'all was booked at the same time right next to each other and didn't nobody say shit. Except the people screaming for Ice Spice and wasn't even checking for you. So... Y'all let me know what y'all thinking and how you feeling about that down below. 
All right, so the next topic I want to get into is Doja Cat. So Doja Cat has dropped the deluxe to Scarlett, even though it leaked like on a Wednesday or Thursday, and she claims not to care. Um, she said, what does it mean when someone leaks an album? Why do people get upset? And a fan responded and said, because you lose streams. And Doja Cat said, but I don't care, which is a fucking lot to me. And then someone says, you definitely do. And she says, wait, why? And someone else said, if you didn't care, why would you have no, uh, why would you have, if you didn't care, you would have no playlisting. They have a point. And Doja responded and said, what is playlisting? Girl, she always pissed me off. always acting motherfucking clueless and shit, but you got a whole deal with Apple, but don't know what playlisting is. Girl, bye. So, um, let me know how you feel about the deluxe to Scarlet. Um, it came out in full today, officially today. But, you know, like I said, many people already heard it because it leaked a couple of days ago. Um, but let me know what you thought about it. Um, I thought it was okay. There was a few songs that I did like. Um, even though, to me, Doja Cat... Do Here's what I have to say about Doja Cat, and I said this on Twitter earlier. Doja Cat... What makes her sound like she can rap, because keep, Swallow Up Real Pill Baby Girl don't really be talking about shit, but what makes it sound good is the fact that Doja Cat knows how to flow, and she knows how to give a good delivery, right? The flow be good, the delivery be good, and the beats be a vibe, be a total fucking vibe. A lot of these songs had a good vibe to them. She flowed and she delivered well, but when you get into the lyrics, she don't really be talking about shit. Like, at all. A lot of times, Doja Cat says the most random shit. And I'll be like, bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? But the beat be such a vibe and her delivery and flow be so good, you you kind of almost just forget what she, she not, you almost forget she's not really talking about shit until you really get into the lyrics. So, I mean, that's how I've always felt about Doja Cat for some time now. But she knows how to make good songs, but the lyrics really don't be making the, the most sense to me. A lot of the shit she just be saying be random as fuck, so... Um, now, I do want to get into some accusations, according to some people on Twitter. So, Doja Cat has been accused of Shaden Cardi on the song Acknowledge Me, I want to say. But she, you know, tried to clean it up. And, you know, she said she wasn't shading anybody. So, Doja Cat said, no one has done anything to me for me to even want to begin to diss them. All my peers been nice as fuck and welcoming of me. Please stop fucking grasping for straws here. I don't play these games. You all are playing. It's incredibly childish and, quite frankly, for the most... Uh, quite frankly, the most depressing shit I've ever came across on the internet. Grow the fuck up. I don't get in quote unquote rap beefs. Okay. Um, I'm going to call bullshit. Doja Cat loves to play white woman games. So Doja Cat really be full of shit to me. Um, she likes to throw rocks and hide her hand. And, you know, she is half white, so she has a tendency to play motherfucking games, bitch, and act like the goddamn victim when you know damn well your ass is being shady, okay? So, for one, let's get into it. Because didn't on this same album, what was the song called, Wet Vagina, didn't you literally say, pass the popcorn because I really like rap beef? But here you are saying you don't play those type of games and that you don't get in quote-unquote rap beefs, but you literally the one that said you like rap beef. So you don't get in it, but you like it? Is that what I'm going with here, bitch? You wanted to put out a rap album because you wanted to be shady and you wanted to, you know, um, put it in people's face about all your accolades and shit like that. I mean, Scarlet was the first album we got from Doja Cat where she was rapping, rapping, and where she was actually doing something she never did was brag about her accolades and things like that. And you putting it in bitches' faces, your, your peers. So what do you mean you, you, you don't play those type of games and, you, and they haven't done nothing for you to diss them? Bitch, you, you dissed Cardi. You dissed Cardi because she literally said, let me find what she said. This girl literally said, let's see what she has to say. Okay. Who my wife are fucking up? Okay, so Doja Cat, you saying you wasn't dissing Cardi, right? And you saying, what else did she say? Somebody has said, my whole timeline is people theorizing who you might be dissing, even though you've made it clear multiple times that you don't diss your peers. It's so embarrassing. Doja Cat said, I'm dissing the man in the song, saying he's barking like a woman, calling him a bitch, but that goes everyone's, that goes over everyone's head who's smooth-brained. And for context, if you don't know the lyric, the lyric went something like, um, these Cartiers, some, matter of fact, let me just go pull up the lyrics. Um... 
Doja Cat acknowledge me lyrics. Okay, and I think it was like somewhere in the first verse. Yeah, she said, you out here acting like you sniffing on some Carly Rae. Cardi are on you, but you barking like you Cardi Bay. Okay, and so people thought that was a diss to Cardi, and I still feel like it's a diss, even though Doja Cat says it's not a diss. Um, she say it's not a diss, but she's saying, I'm dissing a man in the song, saying he's barking like woman. Okay, but the woman that you compared him to, to be barking like is Cardi B. So in other words, you feel like Cardi B be barking a lot, which I mean, she does stand on it. Cardi B do be on Twitter barking a lot. Okay. She always hop on live barking and yelling and crying about some shit. So you saying this man is barking like Cardi B who does a lot of barking. Bitch, that's a diss. I don't know what the fuck Doja Cat on. She's talking about she don't battle people. She's talking about she don't diss. She don't do rap beef, but she like rap beef on wet vagina though. Like it's just a whole bunch of Karen games to me, bitch. Like throwing rocks and hiding your hand. Like, she likes to play in people's motherfucking face. And, you know, because she don't really want that smoke to be brought back to her. But she definitely be playing on a lot of these bitches' face. She definitely be trying to diss, okay? But you let me know what you think. Now, a lot of people feel like she was dissing Azalea Banks on, allegedly, they feel like she was dissing Azalea Banks on this song called OK Loser. And Doja Cat better stand on that bitch. You're talking to somebody. Somebody. Look, go listen to those lyrics. But, um, honestly... Okay, Loser is one of the best songs on that deluxe. I like the song Acknowledge Me as well, even though she act like she wasn't dissing Cardi, bitch, bitch, we know you was. I know you was. Y'all can let her play in y'all face if you want to, but she most definitely was because Cardi B do be barking. She compared you to a dog, bitch. Um, so people feel like she dissed Azalea Banks on Okay, Loser. Like I said, one of my favorites from the, um, the deluxe as well as that song with ASAP Rocky. So, OK Loser literally was like a whole diss to Azalea Banks. And it only makes sense for it to be Azalea Banks because Azalea Banks always dragging Doja and always got some shit to say about Doja Cat. I low-key feel like Azalea Banks thinks Doja Cat kind of stepped on her toes as well as Dochi. I think she thinks Dochi and Doja Cat um, kind of stepped on her toes. But, you know, at the end of the day, bitch, you just do a lot, whole bunch of talking. That's who really do the barking a lot, too. Um, but anyways, let me know what you think about that. Now... Doja Cat, I don't know if she just be trolling or just be saying shit, but when somebody asked her who her big three was, she named Baby Bash, Pitbull, and Chingy. Um, that's interesting, seeing, being that you always had a start in someone's name in your mouth, your whole come up, but you know, y'all just don't really, she, she don't want to be associated anymore to that certain someone, which I'm, I'm going to let y'all figure out, y'all already know who, but you've taken inspiration from a certain female rapper. Okay, from the start of your career to now, and now all of a sudden they say ask you to name your big three. I think she just threw some names out there. Honestly, Pitbull is wild to me. Um, Chingy, I mean, I can see you know he's been forgotten, but he's definitely made some big contributions to the game. And Baby Bash will always have a few hits, but that was just interesting to me. Um, but going back to her deluxe. Doja Cat got upset at Genius lyrics because they get, didn't get her lyrics right, apparently. So she said, the lyrics from my newest project on Genius are all incorrect. If you want the official lyrics to any of my songs, please visit Apple Music. All lyrics are approved by me. And I found this to be interesting because earlier you said that, you know, you didn't even know what playlisting was. But you're saying Apple Music gets their lyrics or gets your lyrics approved by you which proves even more you have a deal with Apple Music, which we already knew, and that you have to know what playlisting is because you get playlisting on Apple Music. This is what I'll be talking about. She likes to play these games and act fucking slow, but when she know exactly what the fuck is up, she just, I, I don't know. I don't like that about Doja Cat. Like, stand on your shit. This is rap, bitch. Stand on it. But you know how those Karens do. But y'all let me know what you think about it and how you feeling down below. All right, so the next topic I want to get into is... Megan and Stallion. So Megan claims she's torn between what type of vibe she wants on her album. Um, and she say, you know, because people used to whack her for making twerk music. Bitch, you've always made twerk music. I mean, Megan hardly going to put out anything of substance um, with the same one flow shit. So, I mean, take a listen to what Megan had to say. In a better mood. And I was like recording feel good songs and then i got in a ratchet mood because you know it's about to be summertime we're about to be outside so then i started making some little pop that ass music and i just remember 
how y'all used to really whack me for making pop that ass music. So I just really wanted to get on y'all ass and show y'all how bad I could rap. So I really kind of like haven't been in touch with my roots. So I'm trying to see if y'all trying to pop that ass. If y'all trying to, what is giving? Like, what is giving? Now, you can let me know what you think, but honestly, um, Megan, I think you need to get inspired because a lot, when she drops an album, most of the music, 90, 97% of it is sex music, twerking music, you talking about pussy, fucking and sucking and pimping and shit. And it's just, I'm desensitized to that type of shit. Like, when Nicki drop an album, it's going to be versatile. She's going to give you some of everything. When a lot of these rap bitches, especially Megan, drop an album, it's mostly pussy talk, pimp talk, you know, type shit. And if that's what works for you, okay, I, I get there's a market for that. But it, that's why people say you just give up the same shit every time. So you torn between what type of vibe? Why do you have to be torn? Why can't you just have balance on your shit? Like have a little bit twerking shit, but have, you know, to balance it out, have enough of, of music with some substance where you claim you really rapping for real. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times it just be twerk, nasty music, bitch. Every time you look up at Megan on Instagram, she naked. Every time she on a video shoot, she doing some sexual, she naked. She drop an album, it's mostly about fucking and sucking and pimping and shit. Like, not everybody wants to hear and see that from you all the time. That's why you are associated with whoreness, if you ask me. But, you know, y'all let me know what you think you want to hear from Megan from this new album. I thought the album was already motherfucking done. You finna go on tour in, like, what, less than a month, bitch? And this album ain't done yet? But you claim you just been recording, recording, recording. Okay, baby, we gonna see. When we gonna see how it sells too, okay? But if it's anything like Cobra and his, oh, baby, you can keep it. <laughs> you can keep it, child. You can keep that shit. But, you know, let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about it down below. Now, real quick before I move off of Megan Thee Stallion, something else recently came up um, that I thought was kind of pathetic. Um, so Megan Thee Stallion was live and she was seemingly joking about a line on Nicki Minaj's Bigfoot, which of course everybody knows is the iconic diss to Megan Thee Stallion, which Megan Thee Stallion has yet to address or even respond to. Mind you, that was like, what, two months ago that Nicki dropped that song on her ass? So anyways, um, the blogs had reposted a clip of Megan live and she was seemingly laughing at a line um, on Bigfoot where Nicki was like, ho, the things that you've lied about, <laughs> okay? So uh, real quick, take a look. <laughs> Keep up, ho. That's real, though. I know for sure. That hoe said. <laughs> <laughs> that hoe said. <laughs> that hoe said, ho. <laughs> <laughs> I need like a piece of paper. No. <laughs> no. no. Let me stop playing. Yeah, that's not real. So let me know what you're thinking and how you feeling about that. Um, this is not a flex to me. This is actually lame because this lets me know from one, the song is about and it's living rent free in your head. And obviously, if you don't know, if you're not on TikTok, it is a popular sound on TikTok and it is made a trend. Like, you know, people doing their own little videos on that, 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 that little line where it's like, oh, the things that you've lied about. <laughs> and it is a key. And anywhere you go and people play Bigfoot, oh, baby, we know the words. Like, the words, are, they being sung word for word. And it is embarrassing if you are Megan Thee Stallion, who the song is intended for. But all of this trying to go live and laugh at it and trying to make it seem like you unbothered by it, the fact that you're even acknowledging it two months later is letting it be known that it's living rent-free in your head and that, yeah, you, you're aware of it and that you have talked about it. Okay, the fact that you haven't responded, though, is what's lame. Like, this is rap. And then you have Jake Cole making shit worse because he up here apologizing to a nigga that dissed him. Megan Thee Stallion ain't even responded to a bitch that dissed her. But two months later, you want to come out and, you know, kind of allude to it and laugh. Like, you know, it's, it's all fun and games to you. But, bitch, at the end of the day, you ain't responded and you look lame. Like, real spiel. If you can acknowledge it, that it exists, bitch, you need to respond because she dragged your ass. And the fact that you haven't respond, responded makes people feel like you can't respond, honestly. That's how I feel because if them things wasn't true that she said about you, why wouldn't you come out and, you know, 
clear that up or drop a freestyle like you would do any other time. You know what I'm saying? And it's just pathetic to me. But the fact that she's addressing this now around the time that she just dropped that collaboration with Glorilla and you're supposed to be going on tour, she's just trying to bring that traction back to her and that Glorilla song because the numbers is ass. They didn't even make global Spotify. Okay. She's just trying to drag that in my most humble opinion. She's trying to drag the attention back to that song and the fact that she's about to go on tour, which baby them tour tickets is not really selling like that, baby, because it is not sold out. They can sit up there and try to paint that narrative all they want to, but y'all best to go on Ticketmaster for yourselves and see. As a matter of fact, go on StubHub and see all them unbought resold tickets, baby. Do you hear me? So at the end of the day, it's just her trying to get back in that Nikki algorithm and draw some attention to this little collaboration that she dropped with Glorilla because how is it you have not acknowledged what she has said in Bigfoot this whole time? But as soon as you and Glorilla drop a, a, a song together, here it is, you try to want to get at some light just so it can kind of put you back in that Nikki algorithm. And so you can maybe get Nikki to respond and, and go off and help bring traction to this goddamn song. But honestly, I don't see nobody really checking for this song like that anyways. But y'all let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about that down below. Now, speaking of Megan, Glorilla has dropped her new EP called Everything, Everything. Um, let me know if you checked it out, um, what you feel about it. I'll have to get into my review on it later. I got to sit down and listen to it. Um, but I do want to talk about songs that obviously have went viral that people have talked about um, because, you know, she was name dropping. So she did name drop Nikki and Cardi. Um, I think it was in a song called I featuring some nigga I forgot, but you know, she basically said, um, she hopes that, you know, basically they can unite. And if that happened, um, they would break records. First of all, they already came together on a song and didn't shit really come from it. Okay. Um, except for fucking drama. That's one. And Nikki demolished Cardi and everybody else who was on that fucking song. And the song in question that I'm talking about is Motorsport. So if you want to hear a song with Nikki and Cardi on it, go back and listen to that bitch. But Nikki, don't push her and back her into the corner to make her feel like she got to collaborate with your quote unquote cousin, bitch. Okay. And if that's your motherfucking cousin, how does she feel about you trying to get her to link up with a bitch that she claims is an op and that Nikki feels is an op? And it's just so interesting to me because... Glorilla has not mentioned Nikki's name not once and she has really just blown up to me, um, especially since she got the collaboration with Cardi and you unfollow Nikki. You have been paying Nikki dust. You act like she never existed. When people ask you about the grace and music, you act like Nikki is not even a thing. But all of a sudden, if her and Cardi link up, they can break some fucking records. Like, I just feel like, honestly, Glorilla mentioned this for shock value. She mentioned this so the project could trend, that people can go talk about it, people can listen to it and make it a talking point on social media. Honestly, that's just how I feel because what was the fucking point in you even saying this type of shit? And now you got Cardi B fans looking at you crazy because they feel like, why the fuck would she ever link up with Nicki? And you got Nicki fans are already looking at you even more crazy because that's the same bitch who tried to throw a fucking shoe at her and try, try to attack her on a motherfucking red carpet. So why would these bitches link up? You know what I'm saying? You could have met you could have said Nikki and Kim or some shit, but you said Nikki and Cardi. And that's your motherfucking so-called cousin. So honestly, I think Glorilla just mentioned their names together for shock value. And so people could go listen to the song, which is crazy because when this EP dropped, people was talking about her uh, mentioning them in that song, which was called I, more than the lead single that she dropped with Megan that had a whole video. Well, nobody talking about that song with Megan, but they was talking about the song where she name dropped Nikki and Cardi. So again, shock value shit. And then she also mentioned JT in a song, basically saying that her and JT, you know, they ain't seeing eye to eye, but, or some shit like that, but ain't no beef, which, why would you, JT gonna come for your neck, bitch. I honestly feel like there's some tension going on between Glorilla and JT that I can't quite put my finger on yet, but I think it's gonna come to a head very soon. So yeah, I don't know what's T for real between... Glorilla and um it's JT but it's clearly something but Glorilla drives name dropping JT JT was minding her business so I just think that's gonna stir the pot even more which again is kind of what probably Glorilla wants to you know get a little controversy in to help you know with the sales and for think pieces and talking points and shit um but definitely believe JT is most definitely gonna respond if she hadn't already I ain't checked her Twitter but she ain't out, okay? And then on top of that, Glorilla claiming to be related to Lil Uzi when Uzi is fucking with JT. So, you know, it's just a whole lot, a whole lot of going on, okay? And then on top of that, there's that rumor that um, Glorilla and JT got into a little scuffle, okay? Because Glorilla kind of alluded to it on her um, 
on that Yeglo song talking about stopping rap bitches and making bail ho and a lot of people assumed it was JT okay but who knows what's T y'all let me know what you think now the song with Megan which was supposed to be the lead single because they dropped the video to it but you know everybody was talking about the song she was named dropping Nikki and Cardi on but the song with Megan called Wannabe um let me know how y'all feel about it but I kind of thought it was Nia the video was okay they was running around there with platinum blonde wigs um Megan of course shaking ass per usual when she don't when don't Megan shake her ass and be damn what damn near halfway you know naked in the goddamn video okay but um it was low-key kind of mid I mean they used the soldier sample I think um but when they previewed it a lot of people compared it to sexy reds uh get it sexy and I guess Glorilla wasn't kind of feeling that and she kind of dropped receipts with Megan to prove otherwise because, you know, through their text message exchange that Glorilla posted, Megan had told her, which beat did you pick? This one? And Glow said, yeah. And Megan said, did you record anything on the beat already? If you did, what's the concept? Because I'm going to start thinking of some cool shit to say. And Glorilla said, no, I didn't think, um, no, I didn't. I think we should start talking shit and then pick something out of it. But this doesn't negate the fact that um, you, you know, you kind of going up sexy's alley, Okay um we already got to get it sexy this song was not needed and it really didn't do anything for me honestly it might have done something for you but honestly it didn't do nothing for me um so yeah I mean obviously they're trying to get a summer smash but people the people gotta get it sexy I don't really think this song is gonna do much I don't think it's gonna come anywhere close to um where sexy landed on a billboard high 100 because you know she predicted to go top 20 next week um with her solo single get it sexy and I don't think these two coming together is gonna get them a uh, just a hit off of. I think yeah glow is more is gonna be more popping in this song um because it's I don't know it's just the most random collaboration like Megan and Glorilla came out of nowhere so I don't know um I, I, I really don't know y'all can let me know what you think about it but um I don't know I thought I thought it was kind of mid people claim that Megan was you know coming for Nikki and wacky Nikki but she got to come a little bit harder because I wasn't catching no tea at all. Like, it was the same old, same old. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all let me know what y'all think about the song. Let me know what you think about the project. Like I said, I'm going to have to give the project um, a sit-down listen, and I'll let you know what I think of it. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so the next topic, and the reason why this video has taken an extra two days to come out, that I want to get into is this JT and Glorilla spiel. Um, this past weekend was my daughter's birthday, so I thought I was going to push the video back because I thought I would have time to, you know, um celebrate with her on Saturday but I got so you know when you're planning a little birthday shindig for your babies you know um sh she can get out of whack okay so I didn't have time to finish my edits on Saturday because I said the video was gonna come out Saturday originally it was supposed to come out Friday child but after that whole JT and Glorilla shit I was like yeah I'm gonna have to push this to Saturday and I can finish the edits in the morning child morning ran late and I had to get me and baby girl together so we had her birthday on Saturday had her little thing so Sunday, I was just tired. So today is the day that the video is going, you know, is obviously out. Okay. So my bad. Um, but anyways, I wanted to give my two cents on this whole JT and Glorilla thing. And I'm not going to read everything tweet for a tweet per se. I'm just going to kind of give you my two cents on what kind of happened and highlight the most important shit um, to, in my most humble opinion. So honestly, if you don't know how it started, it started with, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about how their exchange had started on Twitter. It started with, you know, a comment that was made on the shade room. Somebody had said, do anybody know why Glow slapped her at the award show? And JT responded and said, ne she never slapped me ever, ever, never. Like y'all find somebody to play with. Okay. And so that's kind of what got it started a bit. And then she took it to Twitter. JT took it to Twitter and also said, um, I've been said she didn't. She the one went radio silent, played into it, released a song about slapping rap bitches. Now it's female rap unity. Corny. And honestly, it is kind of corny because, you know, JT, when that whole thing at the VMAs kind of was a rumor that, you know, Glorilla had hit JT upside the head or some shit. Um, JT immediately cleared that up. Glorilla did not. Okay. And then she released a song about slapping rap bitches and everybody took that bar and ran with it and made it about JT and Glorilla never cleared that up. So, I mean, it is kind of corny. Um, and then, you know, Glorilla turned around and said in a song that, um, 
because I think she has said me and JT ain't beefing. Oh, me and JT ain't the best of friends, but we ain't beefing. And that's what JT responded with. She did with on Twitter said, you know, she the one played into it. it released a song about slapping rap bitches. Now it's female rap unity because we're really talking about Cardi and Nikki coming together and that her and JT and best of friends, but they ain't beefing. Well, my whole thing is, first of all, we already know, like I said before, Glorilla only dropped these uh, names just so it can bring a little bit of traction to her EP. That's a obvious, 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 right? Um, but the thing about it is you make a song, uh, you know, about basically about playing into the whole theory of you slapping JT because you said slapping rap bitches. And you know, that whole rumor that has never been put to rest by you about slapping JT. And then you turn around on another song on the same project and say, you and JT ain't the best of friends, but y'all ain't beefing. And it just makes people feel like more and more that, you know, that whole rumor had a little bit of truth to it and you still not really clearing it up. So JT said, fuck it. I'm gonna clear it up, bitch. Okay. So that's why she said what she said on The Shade Room, and she said what she said on Twitter. And then somebody else said, uh-oh, so she's been subbing Glorilla this whole time. Because, you know, JT been making random tweets over the past week or two, um, you know, getting at somebody. And everybody was like, well, who is JT really getting at? And JT responded to this tweet and was like, no, the fuck I wasn't. I don't know these girls like that to have problems with them. And I always wish them the best first. Now, that I don't believe, JT. I do believe that, you know, you may have heard the song or, you know, got word of what, you, you know, Glorilla about to name drop you on this project and you kind of released and released that um, frustration on Twitter, okay? Um, so I, that I'm not buying. I do think he was kind of subbing Glorilla um, these past couple of weeks. But, you know, I mean, I don't blame you. Shit, I don't blame you. But don't uh, deny, stand on it. I would have just ignored it if uh, what he said, if that was the case. So anyways, they said, who, so who started the rumor and why Glow ain't just cleared up to begin with? That's weird. And JT said, I guess she was waiting on her tape to address and who going to clear up going viral for slapping someone when the whole hood believed it. It was on brand. And so that's what JT has said. And then Glorilla, her ass came up and I guess that was her, you know, breaking point. She came up after JT said that, said, Ho, shut your dumb ass up and fix them ugly ass wigs. I said it ain't no beef, ho. You the one with the secret animosity. And I did not like that because how are you going to say she's the one with the secret animosity, but yet you name dropped her? You know what I'm saying? You alluding to, you, you, you never cleared up the rumors that you slapped her. And then you say in your song, slapping rap bitches, never cleared it up that you didn't touch it, JT. And then you name drop her in your song and say she the one with secret animosity and she's bothered. Ho, if you don't want me to come for you, don't name drop me, bitch. Okay? So, and a lot of people took what Glorilla was saying um, as her calling JT ugly. And I, when I first read the tweet, I thought she was calling JT ugly too. But she said, fix them ugly ass wigs. Same difference. If my hair ugly, I'm ugly. Okay? So, that's just what it is. So I was like, I know Glorilla ain't trying to come for nobody looks because Glorilla wigs be looking halfway crazy all the top goddamn time. So I don't know what she was talking about. So after Glorilla had said that, she tried, uh, you know, turned around, and tried to be like her cousin Cardi B and delete the tweet. But people had already screenshotted it. And then she going to talk about some never mind, no free promo. What do you mean? No free promo, bitch. You were the one who name dropped JT. You wanted a response. You got a response and you wanted it to bring traction back to the project, which is what it was doing. So once um jt said that or once glorilla said that my bad jt said ugly shouldn't leave your mouth ever joe you look like you was born feet first puss ass hoe don't mention me secret animosity for why okay and so yeah child and then she was like ugly wigs bitch is you dumb hoe you'll never in your life be this raw i've been had fake titties off care credit i've been uh i've been that bitch you just getting off trainer wheels okay so JT was going in, and my thing is, before I get into it, JT really had them clapbacks for real. Um, no, no bias, no shade, but she was getting on glow ass, okay? Like, Lil Rilla tried to make it seem like she was unbothered and that it was all for jokes, but baby, I'm not buying that, okay? Because JT was dragging you by the lace front, bitch. So, um, then Mob's World, or, you know, Milagro from Mob Radio, she had posted um, the that's a clip from Glorilla on Club Shay Shay, and basically... Uh, Shannon was asking her 
if Uzi was really her cousin. And she basically went around and diverted the question. She never really said yes or no, which people already know that that's not really her cousin. And so JT had quoted that tweet and was like, she been picking and I didn't care because it's no reason to like, it's no reason to like, girl, what was all that for? Just to say it's no beef, childish as fuck. Ooh, excuse me. And I agree with JT. What is you name dropping me for if it ain't no beef? What is you trolling me for with my man if it ain't no fucking beef, bitch? And so then Glorilla responded to JT and said, I mentioned your name to clear the air. What you wanted me to say, I didn't slap you, but uh, hit you with my purse and, instead, scary ass hoe. So again, she's saying, well, I may have not slapped you, but I definitely hit you with my purse. So you lied about a, a rap bitch getting slapped, right? You, you lied about that. And now you're saying that you hit her with your purse. I don't know what the fuck happened between JT and Glorilla. Obviously, something went down at the VMAs. Um, you know, JT denying anything, you know, that she got slapped, which obviously she didn't get slapped. Well, really saying she didn't slap her, but hit her with a purse instead. Now, if you lying about slapping JT, I can't really believe you if you hit her with a purse either, honestly. Like, what the fuck happened? If, at the most, I honestly think words were exchanged, but I don't think nothing was, you know, it actually landed on JT, honestly. Because, bitch, why would you dry slide about slapping a bitch? You know what I'm saying? And so JT responded and said, you are a liar, bitch. You didn't hit me. Um, you didn't hit me with shit, fan that ass, bitch. You approached me sounding like an old beat up box Chevy. <laughs> what up, gang? And I thought that was hilarious. And then Glorilla gonna sit up here and say, don't make me pop up. Uh, don't make me pop up at one of them backyard barbecue shows you're doing. You feeling a way about slapping rap bitches and making bail ho. Guess that last run and had you thinking you the only bitch I touched. Um, well, what other rap bitch you didn't got into it with, bitch? <laughs> like what to seek to and all rap ho that's a, a zeus ho like and I, we already know she would have beat your ass so like what is you talking about bitch okay and my thing is you trying to you know play on jt head talk talking about some backyard barbecues but when you doing that shit last year and i don't see you going on no um tour by yourself right now you going on tour opening up for another bitch okay so don't let that megan tour get to your head because man them tickets ain't even selling like that baby so pipe down pipe down pipe down because i don't see you headlining your own goddamn show okay um and the last ones you did you was definitely doing the backyard barbecues too and i don't see nobody lined up trying to see your ass so you trying to play on her but baby you looking crazy too okay and honestly that's how you supposed to do it that's how you come up that's how you build your fan base maybe you should try it because the only people supporting you right now seems to be cardi b and megan and stallion fans if you ask me so yeah child it was just a whole bunch of back and forth a whole bunch of back and forth jt said i honestly thought glow was a real bitch man but she not she caused all that shit with F and F remix too. Came in the game messy and phony, ready to switch on your homies too. Um, that had your jump back on the roof. And Glorilla said, "Yeah, you slower than me. I'm done arguing. Get up with me in real life. I don't do the internet. You gonna get, you gonna win every time. I already heard you going broke anyway, bitch. Why you pocket watching? So you up there uh, hee hee and ha ha and, and, and talking about me behind the scenes, bitch. And you don't even know me, bitch. What the fuck? Um, you, I'm going broke, but you wanted me to be on your song and have sweetie pants with your wigs, bitch. Make it make sense, babe. So." JT responded to Glorilla's backyard barbecue comment and said that never made me feel away, dick face. I never reacted, never gave a fuck, just stopped the fake unity shit. And that's what I'm saying. And then JT said, yo, God, he started at backyard barbecues. Now he own you. So this is not a drag. Real hustlers relate, but pull up. And honestly, that's true because even Nikki, she started off doing those so-called quote unquote backyard barbecues. And now she's the top bitch in this rap game. Okay. So y'all y'all is funny trying to make a play and then on top of that them same backyard barbecues be packed out full of bitches singing her lyrics word for word so keep it cute baby keep it cute so yeah and, and it was just a whole bunch of back and forth jt posted her mug shot and you know glorilla said those was from stealing and then jt said that this next one gonna be for me poking holes and you like an air mattress bitch i was like oh my oh my god why would she say that <laughs> That shit was so funny to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> she said, poke out and you like an air mattress. Oh, my God. Um, but, no, that was hilarious to me. Um, but they just kept going back and forth, y'all. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all of that because they kept going, like, what seemed to be for hours. Uh, Glorilla got to talking about JT's wigs, um, child. And it was it was just a mess, child. It was a mess. Um, what else? Let me see if there was anything else worth mentioning. 
Oh, what I thought was really funny when uh, JT told Glorilla, bitch, you're, you're ugly. You got no sex appeal. Got dragged for trying to be seductive at the awards. Crying your label because you was tired of crump dancing. You are a glock and pit bull that needs to stay in her G face. <laughs> you are not a Cinderella. Hell, you're not even a stepsister, bitch. It was just, it was a lot. Glorilla thought she won, but JT was really dragging you down, girl. I'm not even going to hold you. It was just a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. Meanwhile, the song that, you know, Glorilla was trying to promote at the same time, Wanna Be with Megan Thee Stallion, debuted at number 67 on the U.S. Spotify with 613 streams. So, child, that wasn't no higher than what Cardi B did with that Enough song. So at the end of the day, you trying to make fun of her backyard barbecues, but bitch, you look like you might want to go on one of them backyard barbecue shows because, baby, 613K streams at number 67 and didn't even touch global Spotify, that's not a flex, okay? So let me know what you thought about it. I just think it's unfortunate how people has been seemingly coming for JT. Like, this was so unprovoked. You know, Glorilla talking about JT, you know, um, she ain't trying, J JT don't need to be getting no free promo off of her, but... Baby, at the end of the day, you brought JT's name up in your song, and she has every right to say something, feel some type of way, or respond to you. So that's just how I honestly feel about it. Um, but y'all let me know what you know, what you thinking and how you feeling. Um, I just thought it was pathetic. And then, not even fast forward a few days later um, to today, and you got Ken Barbie coming for JT. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we already know why he going to come for JT. That's because she got into it with Cardi and, and JT fucks with Nikki. You know, Kim Barbie can say that he don't, he's not biased or, you know, it's his blog and his opinion. But at the end of the day, his opinion always seems to align with bitches who, um, it always seems to go in favor. His opinion always seems to go in the favor of bitches who fuck with Cardi B or is Cardi B herself because that's his friend. He makes it known. And, you know, he always bigs up, big ups the hoes that's cool with Cardi B. And he puts down the women that are not cool with Cardi B or cool with Nikki, to say the least. So, and that just is what it is. And I wish he would stand on it. He always talking about some of his blog. He can do what he want. Yeah, you can. But just admit that you, it's a pattern. And it's very noticeable. You take up for bitches who's cool with Cardi B. You never post ill to Cardi B because that's your friend. And for the people who cool with Nicki Minaj, you've got to drag them for it. Or you, or you make them, a, you know, you, you, first of all, he hardly posts Nicki because when he did, it was always some bullshit. But I think he got threatened in a lawsuit, honestly, because he don't really post Nicki like that no more. Because every time he did, it would always be something so negative about her. But now you just come for the people who she cool with and always got some negative shit to say and so basically you know um JT called Ken Barbie to his face on Twitter today she called him a lab dog and he said I'm a lab dog for who because you the one required to recite this is at a as a humiliation ritual because you know Nikki and JT went live together and Nikki was like you know what's the lyrics to that one song where you know you was dissing me but you know that was just a key key moment and JT was like your face is a humiliation ritual baby your obsession with Nicki Minaj is a humiliation ri ritual how did she get in this you're a lab dog for Cardi B and it's straight like that like it's straight like that okay and so um after she said that he said obsessed you call me a lap dog and i acknowledge who you're actually one for cardi doesn't run my blog i do now go recite them this is like you was told and she said i did what you never do and i say what i said to the person's face if that's reciting then so i'm not scared to stand on my words and apologize like a woman and that's why you mad you wouldn't hate me so much if i didn't show the queen of rap love it boils your ass cheeks and he said, why would I be mad at that? I don't even post about her for real. Mm, you used to, and I wonder why. And then he said, you post her more than I do. You the one that brought her up. And let's pause and clear that up because no, she didn't. You're the one that brought up Nicki Minaj because you said something about reciting the reciting some lyrics and calling her a lap dog type shit. So you the one that brought her up, okay? And she said, she clocked your seat and said, no, baby, you're the lap dog for Cardi B. And so he said you're bored and mad about something and been trying to find somebody to take it out on all week fuck out of here and it just you know like I said it's just crazy to me how if you fuck with Nicki Minaj and align yourself with her the people who fuck with Cardi B the blogs and shit like that or like Kim Barbie they're always going to paint that uh, or twist that narrative to you know the positive press being posted is always going to be about Cardi B and, and and the people she fuck with or that fuck with her and the negative shit is going to be highlighted you know to the people who don't fuck with her and, and more so fuck with Nicki Minaj and that's just what it is it's like if you align yourself with Nicki Minaj it's kind of a good and a bad thing because you know you get the barbs and shit on your side sometimes um and, and you get 
Well, it's a lot of talented people that align themselves with uh, the people that can really rap that align themselves with Nicki Minaj. So, but the the negative side is, you know, a lot of people that's cool with Cardi B, they they dry as come for you, the, whether it be rap bitches or the bloggers. And it's like lame because JT don't be bothering nobody. It's like as soon as she go on her on her, you know, her tour, all of a sudden, you know, it's a problem, and all of, everybody got something to say, and they want to come for JT when JT is minding her business. And I just honestly think that's kind of lame. Like, let this girl do what she do. Like, she is not bothering nobody. Like, she is booked and busy. Y'all got so much shit to talk. Why don't y'all show up at one of her shows and say it to her face, baby? Do you hear me? Because you already know the dates. Okay. So y'all let me know what you thinking and how you feeling about that. I just think it's unfortunate. Um, but JT doing her big one. She been dragging these hoes on her own. I don't know why people expected Miami to jump in a motherfucking thing because it ain't involving Santana. All right. So y'all let me know what you thinking and how you feeling about that down below. Child, and just when I thought that was the tip of the iceberg, y'all, here come Carisha ass. Now, before I get into Carisha and JT, Let's swallow a real pill. Every time JT gets into a Twitter tussle, Carisha is nowhere to be motherfucking found. But every time Carisha got into one, JT was always right there defending her, right? As well as, you know, Santana. But every time JT getting into a Twitter tussle, both of their asses has always been silent. Santana, whatever. But Carisha literally never has JT's back. Even when she got into it with Cardi B, remember she was like, I'm just waking up or whatever bullshit she said. You know what I'm saying? Acting like she was oblivious to all the shit that didn't happen and she just woke up and even then she didn't say anything in, def in JT's defense so let's not act like Carisha has uh, taken up for JT in the past before she always made JT look like she was fending for her goddamn self so here come Carisha um you know after JT and um Ken Barbie was getting into it and even Santana put his two cents in but I'm not focusing on him okay because he always sticking his neck in women's business but JT came and said, um, or Young Miami came and said, a bitch been sneak dissing me for weeks, and I ain't say shit. What a bitch mad at me for? Like, first of all, you have JT's number. Why would you come on Twitter knowing she's in a Twitter tussle with multiple people and, and add to the, to the mix instead of helping defend her? If you weren't going to defend her, why say shit at all instead of adding to the negativity? So JT quotes and says, oh, Miss Mama, this your last day playing dumb. And then JT says, it'll be too much for me to tweet. I will like a sit down, Carisha, please. And this time, leave Santana home. And Young Miami said, I ain't jealous of a soul. I'm always like, go, bitch, go. I clap for everybody. I show love to everybody. It ain't a bitch I haven't shown love to. Mm, I, I, I don't want to agree with that. But anyways, JT say, I know I come off crazy, but never in my life did no whack shit to this girl. She literally enjoys seeing me being dragged. When people show me love, she goes crazy and call it a hate train. But like I said, we can sit and talk about it. And I absolutely do believe that because like I say, every time JT is in a Twitter tussle getting dragged, Carisha is nowhere to be found. But every time, you know, JT is getting lifted up and people is criticizing Carisha's rapper skills, she act like she got a motherfucking hate train. And then Carisha say, LOL, here we go. Okay. And so then Carisha say, for you to come on here and try to play victim is crazy. Uh, Jatavia, you've been sneak dissing me for the last couple of days. I haven't said shit back to you. You made two whole songs dissing me, and I still wrapped your shit with my chest and show love. So what's the real problem here? Bitch, okay. And then, and then young mammy say, you let the internet put in your head that I'm jealous of you. Uh, when well, you know I'm the one that's always pushed us, you have resentment towards too, and that's okay. That really didn't make sense. But anyways, then Young Mammy said, bitch trying to kick me while I'm down and playing to these narratives is dangerous when I've been nothing but a friend to you. And then JT said, which songs was about you? This bitch gonna say, Young Mammy gonna say, no bars and sideways. Girl, y'all tell me the truth. When y'all first heard no bars and sideways, the first person y'all thought of was Young Mammy. Because didn't in no bars, she literally said, what she say in no bars? She said, city girl shit, even when you think it ain't city girl shit, I'm a city girl, bitch. Why would you, how was that a diss? She's still including you. And then in sideways, she said, riding solo, but I'm still in a group. Again, how is that dissing you? And then you rap both of them songs with your whole motherfucking chest. What bitch is going to rap their own motherfucking diss song with their whole fucking chest to the goddamn world knowing it's a diss song about her? That's like Megan going out in public and rapping Bigfoot with her whole fucking chest. Like, bitch, are you dumb? And then JT said, girl, the internet told you that them songs was about you. Um, when I'm literally the one saying it's city girl shit, even when you, 
even when it ain't City Girl shit, that was released under City Girls, or the one saying, I'm riding solo, but I'm still in the group. Get your phone back from whoever this is, baby, don't play with me. And so um, then JT say, you really losing it. If you thought this, what, if you thought this, why, if you thought this, why not speak to me about it? His punctuation is killing him. Um, you came on here and said, LOL, so people can ask you why you wasn't defending me, attention seeking as usual. And then young mammy say, a bitch trying to kick me with, oh, I already read that. JT responded to that and said, you looking for a way out your situation. Who was the first person you called when it all started? You a sad fucking case. And young mammy say, um, she, well, she responded to somebody who said, if it was a diss, why was you on your story making videos and singing both songs? You trying to flip this around and make, you know, to make JT look bad publicly, and I'm clocking you. And Young Miami responded to that person and said, bitch, because I'm not a hater, which again, that don't make sense, because that's just like Megan getting up there, because she's not a hater, and rapping her own goddamn diss song, word for fucking word, with her whole chest on live. That don't make no sense, baby. You're not making any sense. You, this is lotto logic here, okay? And so then, um, Young Miami said, not you, when you know JT said, who was the first person you called? Um, regarding your situation. And that young mammy said, you weird, but always want to act like I'm a weirdo. You always mad. It's always a problem. And all I try to do is push you, tell you the shit that you can rap, you should model, etc. You always mad. You doing your shit as you should. Congratulations. But somehow you still mad. And this is where I got to clock Miami. First of all, bitch, you're full of shit. You're full of fucking shit. And like I said, the fact that you will come up against JT, knowing that she's been going at it with multiple bitches the last three, four days is crazy to me. Cause you just want to add negativity to the narrative. Cause you most certainly have been jealous and people been clocking it. Uh, blogs like got the scoop, even been clocking how every time JT posts an accomplishment or something, here you go trying to turn around and do something. JT going on a club tour, here you go trying to go on a club tour. You ain't been putting out music. Now all of a sudden you want to put out this so-called music. And on top of all of that, you got a new song coming out this Friday with Skillet Baby, so of course you want to insert yourself to help bring traction to that. Like, it's fucking pathetic to me. Like, every time JT is added with somebody, here you go either mute or trying to, you know, not help the situation at all, and here you are, even if y'all wasn't cool in this moment, why did you have to come and add negativity to it when y'all was literally, you know, a duo? That shit don't make no sense to me, and that's foul. And it looked like you're trying to bring promotion to your new song that's coming out, that which we all know is going to be trash because you're not the rapper and never been the rapper of the motherfucking group, bitch. And the fact that you can come up against JT and address shit with JT publicly, but you still ain't spoke on Diddy is fucking crazy to me. And that makes you look crazy and speak a lot to your character. You won't go to bat for JT, but you stick up for Diddy or you silent and won't say nothing in regards to his case, probably because you're still fucking on that man, but you ain't said shit in, as it pertains to Diddy. But here you go, the minute JT is on the burner, here you go want to turn the fire up. That's crazy to me. That is so fucking crazy to me. And this was the, pers the person that you said at once upon a time was your sister. So I just don't like none of that. I think Young Miami is fake. Um, and I think, you know, I already knew that, you know, the energy has been off with the City Girls and JT for some time, or, you know, the City Girls, JT, Young Mammy, everybody been clocked the tea, that shit been off with them. But, you know, it was always kept silent, kept mute, and JT still show love when she did. Carisha still show love when she did. But now all of a sudden, you see everybody going up against JT because, you know, Glorilla not cool with JT, Megan not cool with JT, Cardi not cool with JT. Here come Carisha want to make it known that, oh, well, I'm not fucking with the bitch any goddamn ways, and I got a new song coming out. This is this team I'm on over here. That's just what it fucking looks like to me if you ask me so y'all let me know what you thinking and how you feeling about that down below all right so the next topic i want to get into is lotto so um lotto has teased a remix um to the flop song sunday service which i don't know what's the point of a remix when the original done flip flopped off the charts after one week and ain't really doing shit um i don't even hear people playing this goddamn song but you know i guess if somebody want to just be nice to get for a remix, I guess. So someone had tweeted, bitch, you really went the fuck off on Sunday service. And Lotto said, wait till you hear the remix. And then someone else responded and said, I told you I don't want a remix. And Lotto responded and said, you say that now till you see who and hear this motherfucker. So obviously um, she feels like it's somebody of value on the remix. Let me know who y'all believe is on the remix or rather who you want to hear on the remix if you even want to hear the motherfucker remix because apparently a lot of people don't even want to hear the original, bitch. Um, so let me know what you think about that. Now, Lotto also performed Waterfalls uh, with TLC. She performed Left Eyes Verse, which I found to be rather strange that she just basically regurgitated Left Eyes Bars. Um, I thought that was a little odd. 
I don't know why she couldn't put her twist on it if you was an MC for real and, you know, make it her own. But I guess they just wanted her to take the place of Left Eye. And a lot of people, including myself, feel like Lil Mama would have been a better fit and done it justice uh, for multiple reasons. Lotto just seemed long. She seemed winded. She seemed out of breath. She didn't end the verse properly. It was just like a random ass, let's bring Lotto up here type shit. So um, I don't know. I really wasn't feeling, feeling it. I really, uh, really wouldn't fuck with it like that. But you know, everybody got their own cups of tea. That's just my spiel. But you let me know what you're thinking about it and how you feel about it. Um, I want to know what the fuck Lotto plans on doing with her music career at this point because nothing really seems to be sticking for Lotto. Um, I, I just, I don't know. People claim that they feel like Drake could be on her Sunday service remix. I mean, I guess since he fucking her sister allegedly and, you know, she with 21 and 21 be on Drake's dick. But, I mean, honestly, nobody really cares. Nobody really cares and checks for what Lotto be having going on. Um, and that's just not my most humble opinion. That's just an observation. Okay. But y'all let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about it down below. But actually just then, before I get off Lotto, I just, um, came across, I guess her in a recent interview. She was, um, I think she stopped by hot 107.9 in Atlanta. Um, I guess she was promoting birthday bash and, um, she was asked about her top three female hip hop artists. Okay. And so take a listen to what she said. So uh, I know you had some inspirations throughout your career. You had sure. some people that you listened to. For sure. Females to be exact. What are your sure. top three females of all time in hip hop? My top three, my top three female rappers, rappers. of all time, Dead or Alive. Yep, Dead or Alive. Okay. Kim. Gotta say Kim. Um... Wait, my favorite or like the best? The best. The I'm gonna say the, the best. best. I'm gonna okay, say the best. Okay, okay. Who? I'm gonna say um, Kim. Gotta say Kim. I'm gonna say Left Eye. Rest in peace, Left Eye. And Shotty. Shotty. Okay. Shoddy. Okay. So let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about that down below. Um, I heard or not heard, but saw rather. I saw a lot of people saying this just proves she's not a hater. Because ultimately, quote unquote, Shawty is supposed to be about Nicki Minaj. So she don't want to say Nicki's name. She just going to call her Shawty. And so a lot of people, since they presumed it was about Nicki, they said that this made Lotto not a hater, proof she's not a hater. Um, and I don't agree with those sentiments. The fact that you can't even say her name just proves how bothered you really are still because it shouldn't have been shit to you. If you weren't really phased by it, it shouldn't have been shit to you to just say, Nikki, you've been saying and screaming her name any other time before y'all fell out. So, you know, because the proof is in the pudding, there's plenty of clips and tweets and, and interviews to prove that Nicki Minaj was literally the number one female hip hop artist that inspired you. I mean, for God's sake, you framed a goddamn tweet that she mentioned you in, in your goddamn house, baby. So, I mean, we already know that, you know, impact that Nikki has had on you. You've admitted that time and time before. And now here we are in 2024 when they ask you about your top three. Not only do you not name her first, even though you said that was the number one artist that inspired you at one point, but you can't even say her name. And, you know, y'all can say all y'all want to. Oh, it just proves she's not a hater. Well, she never said Nikki's name. We're just, most people are just assuming that she's talking about Nikki because of you know, how much she has said she's inspired her in the past before. But if Lotto want to, she can take take it around and say, oh, who said I was talking about Nikki? Or it could have been, you know what I'm saying? So it, she can spin it like that, but everybody pretty much know, even I, I know that she was probably talking about Nicki Minaj. But she, again, she did not say her name. So you can't just say for 100% fact that she was talking about Nikki. She just said shoddy. But um, most people assume that she was. But like I said, a lot of people claiming that that makes Lotto not a hater. I just don't agree with that. It's It makes you look pressed and bothered still. Like, that shit happened with y'all over, what, two years or two years ago now? You should not be that pressed and bothered by that. Like, especially if you, you know, want to move forward because you realize that beefing with Nikki and, and you know, that does not, uh, what is it, benefit your career in any type of way. So at the end of the day, I feel personally like she wanted to, she wants to make up with Nikki. It was a, another interview 
I think she did. I can't remember what. I think it was last year. I can't remember. Was it Double XL? That interview she did where she said she basically regretted um, a lot of rap beefs. I think she wanted to make up with Nicki then, and I think that was kind of extending an olive branch or a peace offering. And you know, Nicki wasn't really having it. Um, so I think she wanted to make up then, and I think she kind of wanted. I think Lotto really does regret uh, falling out with Nicki Minaj, honestly. And I think Lotto kind of wants to get back with Nicki, or maybe she's tried to apologize behind the scenes. But like Nicki said on Pink Friday too, you know, you sealed your fate if you ever had it on the family. Okay, so at the end of the day, Lotto, you the chop hoe, and uh, you know, next time just say Nicki name. You can say Kim name, you can say Left Eye name, but you can't say Nicki name. It's, Girl, you just look bothered still because clearly Nikki has no problem saying you're worse. Lock ho, the chop ho, okay? But y'all let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about that. Down. All right, so the next topic I want to get into is Sexy Red. So Get It Sexy is predicted to reach the Billboard um, Top 20 next week. It's currently at number 27 right now, and it's predicted to go um, to number 17. Or it's currently number 28 right now, and it's predicted to go number 17 next week which would be her first solo single to do so. So congratulations to Sexy Red, organic hit. People is really checking for her outside, really listening, really streaming, and she didn't drop the video until after the song um, did what it did. So congratulations to her because, you know, she finna get her first um, solo top 20 on its second week being out. Meanwhile, Enough on its second week has plummeted all the way down the charts, bitch, to what, 47? So people want to hear Sexy Red. People is not trying to fuck. People, I'm, I will say this. More people is fucking with Sexy Red than they fucking with Cardi B right now. People obviously want to hear Sexy Red. People is not checking for what the fuck Cardi B is putting out because everything she done put out in this past month, the past month, and all month of March, everything Cardi put out has flopped. And it's no tea, no tea, no shade, baby. Um, enough. What was the record before that? The, the, the Like What Freestyle. I don't even think that's on the fucking charts no more. That was like two, three weeks out. Um, the song with Shakira debuted at like what number 74. Um, and then she had the Flo Millie remix that didn't do shit. So Cardi needs to figure something out because bitches like Sexy Red is coming up and they're taking over. Okay, a real black ghetto bitch. Okay, because that's the that, that's what Cardi B pretends like she is. Um, maybe ghetto, but definitely not black. So you know, um, y'all let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about it down below. All right, so the next topic I want to get into is Koi and Cali. So apparently g Easy has come out with the new song and he has put both of these ladies on it, which nobody is talking about for obvious reasons. I think it's called Femme Fatale, Femme Fatal or some bullshit. Um, the only reason I know about it is because Koi posted it. Hell, I thought it was her goddamn song, but they came out with it on a Thursday, I guess, because it was too much heat dropping on a Friday. But either way, nobody was talking about it. Um, Koi's verse was cute. Kylie's voice is nice, but her verse was mid. The whole song has no replay, uh, replay value, honestly. Kylie need to go get in where she fit in, but she honestly fucked up when she came for Keisha Cole. It's like, you know, got to swallow a real pill. Um, Kylie needs better producers. She needs a better writer. She needs a better team because Kylie is on Instagram acting like a goddamn porn star. She might as well start her own fans. Koi, LeRae, same shit, okay? These bitches is always naked on Instagram, but they want to rap on the side. I'm just not understanding. Um, Koi's first album was cute. Second album, trash. The EP afterwards was trash. And I don't know what the fuck she's doing now. Uh, both of these girls need to go figure out where their music career is going, honestly, because nothing that they put out has been sticking, especially that bullshit Kylie had put out um, a couple of months ago, whatever. The, I can't, that, that Keisha Cole sample that got her in hot water because she wanted to come for Keisha Cole. So, you know, let me know what you're thinking about this song, if you even bother to listen to it, if you heard it. Um, let me know what you think now. Yeah. All right, so the next thing and the last thing I want to get into is Sweetie. Sweetie has teased a new song, Nani Nani. She's being a little bit more consistent this era with releasing music. Um, she released, I forgot the name of the song she released a couple of months ago, but she also released Rich Tivities afterwards. And now she's teasing another song, Nani Nani. So maybe Pretty Bitch Music is actually going to come into fruition um, this year. Because, you know, she's been saying it's going to come every two years. And it's been like five, six years since she's debuted and has yet to put out a debut album. Um, so this song seems to be called Nani Nani. She's begged her label to 
get a budget so they can do a music video and push the song and she said the label has agreed um so i guess this is the next song you can be expecting from sweetie um it sounds like a teenager song it sounds very um immature but i know there's a market for that um it just don't sound like grown woman shit it sounds a completely different vibe for me than from rich Tivities, which actually was an okay song when i go back and listen to it you know i said I, it was mid at first um but it's all right song i think it's one of sweetie's better songs that she's released in the past year or two it's better than anything on that last project she had put out that ep um but this song it seems like it would be marketed to it like a tiktok a little the, the, the teenage tiktok audience type shit um it just seems very immature like some high school or young adult type shit you know what i'm saying um but you know hopefully it does well for her because you know sweetie is starting to be back on the scene a little bit more so like i said she's been outside more dropping music more so maybe pretty bitch music will come out but um you know will y'all support sweetie is the question y'all let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about that down below so remember before you get your panties all in the water and shit get them out the crack of your ass because this is just my thoughts my opinions you can let me know yours down below but don't forget to keep it cute in them comments baby do you hear me and per usual follow me on my twitter at southern t that is southern t with two ways yeah i will catch y'all in the next video if i don't go on the label before then chat okay y'all pray for me